So tell us about Reparation Hardware, specifically your cultural works and the video behind it. Yeah, um, that work began um, when I was uh, living in Richmond and it was during the 2016 election. And so in Virginia, you know, I was seeing, it felt like I was living in this giant Confederate monument of a city crossing the Robert E. Lee Bridge to go to work every day and sort of mired, surrounded by these sort of uh, lost cause revisionist uh, monuments everywhere, sort of uh, celebrating the Confederacy. And so there are so many things happening at that time that made me really think about what's left unresolved from the Civil War and the sort of nefarious nature of nostalgia. And so at the same time, I had been living in an apartment uh, alone for the first time and with a kind of a TV cable, free cable that I would leave running on the home and garden television network and became really interested in these sort of fixer upper home improvement shows where there's like hosts who are um, who are trying to refurbish a space using old materials. And so those two things kind of came together in my head, thinking about both what is left unfinished from the his, from like the nation's history or past unresolved, and who has access to doing these sorts of home improvement projects, aka who has access to home ownership. And that sort of naturally led me to start to think about reparations and reparations for Black Americans um, and the ways we have been written out of. Um, home ownership uh, and self-determination in those ways in the uh, written out of the American dream, you know, in many ways, structurally through history. And so, uh, so I started to imagine, you know, like, uh, the like this like a uh, refurbished furniture stores like restoration hardware where they'll have like a three thousand dollar table made out of wood from a barn that's falling apart. Um, and I started to look at the videos that they come out with when they come out with a new line of furniture when there'll be like a designer standing in front of a bucolic landscape talking in really vague terms about where they find inspiration and sort of caressing the wood from this old barn or something like that and imagine making my own video where the new line that was being launched was reparations for black americans um and what would that look like? What kind of possibilities might that open up when those two sort of modes of nostalgia, one sort of presenting itself as benevolent, you know, why do we want to bring these old materials into our home and know their provenance? In some ways, you know, it's to name the past as a success and sort of bring it into our lives tastefully. And also what maybe is so terrifying about the notion of reparations to so many is the fact that not only does it name the past as a failure, it names it as a failure in economic terms specifically. Um, and so that was the starting off point for the video, which led to the larger installation where I sort of created my own furniture design store, um, but it was populated with the with like wood from the barn that I shot the video in, but also these sort of impossible products, what I call my dysfunctional ceramics. So it could kind of camouflage itself on one hand as being one of these high-end design stores. But once you really look closely, you realize something is a little bit off and maybe that makes you think about how something is more than a little bit off in the larger structures we inhabit. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of concepts covered. I think from what I gathered, um, a lot of, you know, a lot of us as human beings, we look at the process a lot. We look at the product a lot of the times, so but we don't actually look at the process. So it's nice that that's, you know, sort of explored here. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I think I'm often just really interested in these sorts of processes, these different ways of making um, and how they're similar to or different from one another, whether it's the home improvement project or the cooking show uh, recipe or the artist, the genius artist sort of flinging around paint in their studio. How do we think about these different kinds of labor and which ones are revered and maybe which ones are ignored or considered mundane? Mm 